Uh, Ipinivo is frontline therapy. Again, we've used a lot of it since April, so the last six months, I don't know, I've probably personally treated 30 or 40 patients with it. Um, so our experience is that most patients do well. The toxicity is manageable. We've certainly had anecdotal patients who got real sick, got in the, had to get in the hospital, IV steroids, et cetera. You know, our system is pretty in tune to these toxicities now in terms of early intervention and management and hospitalization. So, um, you know, we're, I think we're in tune to that, but even so, some patients can get real sick. Um, Efficacy-wise, it's hard to say, but, we, you know, we certainly see responses, especially in patients who are very sick. Patients almost with the worst disease respond the best. The toxicity of nivolumab has been well described. These immune-related adverse events, which pretty much can be an itis in any organ of the body, inflammation caused by the activation of the immune system, which can affect the normal tissues in any part of the body. Most of them are mild to moderate and well-managed. But when you add ipilimumab to nivolumab, you don't change the profile, because so the list of side effects is the same. It, the patients are just more likely to get the side effects, and they're more likely to be intense. So you really have to be ahead of the game as far as detecting early side effects. The key to me as far as managing a patient on immune checkpoint blockade is early intervention. And the only way you really can intervene early is if the patient tells you what they're going through. So the patients have to tell you if they're having diarrhea early or a new skin rash or something like that. And if they do, the side effects are much more reversible than if they wait at home and don't call or you know, assume it's gonna get better with time. You really need to act to reverse the side effects. And if you do, the side effects are manageable in the vast majority of patients. I would say, um, just like any cancer drug, you have to get comfortable using this combination. Um, you know, the Ipinevo was approved in melanoma for a couple years prior, so a lot of community oncologists have, have used it in that setting. The kidney cancer dosing is different. It's only one of Ipi and three of Nevo, so it's actually an easier dosing than melanoma. I think it's less toxic. Um, if, if physicians aren't comfortable, then I would consider, you know, having the patients get their induction four doses at an academic center, and then they can certainly come back for the monthly Nevo maintenance, uh, which is sort of the easier part, and they're probably over their major toxicity at that point. Well, right now we have clinical criteria for selection. We have the intermediate and poor risk groups are sort of guiding who should get these patients, and that's the majority of patients with metastatic disease. Hopefully we can move further beyond that because obviously clinical criteria is somewhat rough. You know, hopefully we can move to a biomarker-based criteria. There's some people would like to use PDL1 expression potentially as that criteria because the response rates, complete response rates are higher in that group, but there, we're still seeing responders in the PDL1 low group. So I don't think that's the perfect marker, but I think there'll be a lot of interest going further once we, now that we have this regimen on figuring out who the best patients are to get it, who, who, which patient needs both drugs.